Park. <laughs> Coronation Street, P694-48, part one, take one. Edited copy. Looks like a van, doesn't it? Yeah. From station officer Jones at number 14 Coronation Street. Persons reported. One, two, over. Search upstairs. Oh, great. What was I here? Occupier's wife believed to be inside, sir. Two men are searching upstairs now. Have you tried them around? Are oh, we doing that now, sir? There's a horse reel inside. I've ordered the breathing apparatus. What did he say? I couldn't hear him. Hey, what's that for? Well, they always send one of them to a domestic incident. Huh? Just in case, like. Can a valor trying to say what they can, are they? It really is best you don't go no, any further, sir. Please, 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 pass! No, oh. sir! Can I'm not moving from back down. Look, I'm not his moving. wife's up there. I'll look out. Just ordered the first round of drinks. It was his farewell party, you see, when... Billy, you weren't in there, were you? No one. Is anybody? Well... Oh, oh, Val! Val's in there! Really? Get the stretcher up here. She hasn't got the twins with her, has she? I, I, th I thought they were spotting the night at Mr. Tatlock's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Can you see him anywhere? Perhaps he hasn't heard. I mean, you know how deaf he can be sometimes. Hey, I'll go and see. Yeah. I wouldn't say too much until we know what's what up there. Come in. Oh. Hello, love. Hello. Uh, just popped into. Uh... Are the twins in bed? Oh, I took them in an hour since. Oh, they'll uh, they'll be asleep then. Oh, I've never had any trouble with them since the day they were born. Hey, and do you know what does the trick? Tipperary. I think I've to sleep with it. I always have them. But I don't reckon I'll get much sense in in future. Well, Wait, must... a minute. That weren't one of them crying, were it? No, no. Well, I definitely heard someone. You know. It's a funny thing. I, I can't imagine them kids going away so well. I don't think I believe it until they're actually gone. Hey, I'll tell you what. Let's go upstairs and have a look at them in bed, shall we? We, we might be lucky, you know, that one of them might wake up for us. Come on. Here's Summers. He 
it, it's quite a commotion. What's going on out there? Uh, there's uh, been a bit of a fire. A bit of a fire? What, somebody's chip pan flared up? I, I, I don't know. Where? In the street, in, in one of the flats. But uh, is she going to be all right? We're doing all we can, though. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, the kettle's simmering. It'll boil right away. I think a drink of brandy will do more good right now. Where's your coat, Albert? We won't be on it, do we? She did look bad in the ambulance. She did have Valerie. Yes. Oh. Where'd you keep your cap? In my pocket. You'll be all right for staying till we get back. Oh, yeah, of course I will. Right. Are they, are they still asleep? Yeah, I popped in while she was out. Oh. We'll, uh, we'll just be at the Rovers if you want us for anything. Mrs. Sharples. I've no idea, love. Kenneth went with her in the ambulance, and that sometimes means... We'll just have to wait and see what the infirmary have to say. It's all we can do. Get her inside. As far as I know, she'll be in casualty ward. They're usually very difficult about making telephone calls. Oh, there's no harm in ringing and saying it's a relative call, in, is there? Well, I am a relative in a roundabout sort of way. Do you want me to phone? Look, Lem's gone down in the van. He said he'd come straight back here as soon as he got someone to report. All the same, you could give him a ring, Irma. I mean, Lem might not be back for ages. Oh. They were very good. They did everything they could. Everybody did. Uh, Ken. Albert's in the back, mate. Uncle Albert, yeah. Oh, he's in the living room. I'll take you through. Elizabeth, yeah. would you like to pour two glasses of brandy for Kenneth and Mr. Tatlock? Yeah. Kenneth's back, Albert. I'll see you a bit later on, most likely. What she want a nighty? Then they ask you to bring a face cloth and a nighty. Don't speak, Ken. 
Don't tell me. You don't want to be here. Thank you, Betty. If it's any help, she didn't suffer. Drink this, Uncle. Apparently, Val wasn't breathing when they brought her out of the flat. His oppo had that uh, oxygen thing on her all the way to the hospital, but she didn't come round at all. Must have been the fumes, then. Or the fire. No. Now, what they think happened, they only think, they don't know. You see, when they found Val, she was lying next to an electric fire that had fallen over. They think that is what started the big fire. So it was the fire? No. She was dead before the fire started. She was electrocuted. That's what they reckon, electrocuted. But how? Well, the fireman, one of the firemen told Jack that uh, there was a faulty switch, a faulty plug on Val's hairdryer. Oh, no. His theory is, you see, that she had uh, both the hairdryer plug and the electric fire plug in an adapter. It happened when she plugged the adapter into a wall socket. An electric plug? You mean two kids have lost their mum just because of an electric plug? It's no consolation, it's no comfort, I know. But the ambulance men turn out about a dozen times a month for incidents involving plugs. You're right, it isn't any comfort. I'm just taking Uncle Albert home. I should be staying with him tonight. Are they all right? Yeah, they're fast asleep. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go and sit in the kids' room for a bit. I've had my life. I've had a good run. Why couldn't they take me instead of Valerie? Sooner. Oh, you know, just spend it here, just the two of us, nothing special. Do you mean to say that there's nothing special about the two Oh, you know what I mean. All right, well, I'll tell you what we do. I know what you mean. We'll nip out early, don't we? There'll be no kids here waking up and coming in. We're going to have it all to ourselves. Mm, I'm with you. to meet you at last, Mrs. Barlow. Oh, Val, please. Uh, Val, uh, where's the sherry, love? The sherry? Yes, love, the sherry. I, uh, I put it under the sink. You put it <laughs> under the... You must have heard of me. What a pity. Your wife couldn't come round. I'd like to... Yes, it is a pity. She, uh, died, you see. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry.
30 seconds to recording. Quiet now. Coronation Street, P694, stroke 48, part two, take one. Hello, Mrs. Sharper. Good morning. I want a five pound bag of potatoes and a tin of luncheon meat. I don't know what Albert Tatlock lives on. He must have the thinnest mice for miles. Have you been in to see him this morning? Oh, I went round earlier on and made a breakfast for him. The twins are used to me with me babysitting for me. Oh, that reminds me. I'll take a quarter packet of chocolate fingers while I think on. Kenneth, uh, won't have told the twins anything yet? No, not yet. Mind you, it's not something you can put off for long. Children cotton onto an atmosphere very quickly. So if he thinks he could miss telling them for two or three days, he's got a... What are you looking at? Uh, I saw Ken going into the flat just as you came in. I was just thinking what an awful feeling. Oh, you know, Mrs. Sharples. I know. Oh, come on, got to put your face on. Look, we're, why not come with the one that God gave you? We both have to like it. So we've made the decision. We're going, definite. Now, don't you undermine me. We're going. We're going. My God. We are. We're going!
Hello, Mrs. Sharper. Hello. How's, how's Susan and Peter? Oh, not so good. They've started asking for Val, and when are they going to the grannies? Oh, well, it's only to be expected, I suppose. I mean, fancy waking up when you're only six and you find no mammy there. Yeah, poor little mites. If you want to use the telephone, please don't keep asking permission. I'd much rather you just help yourself. Thank you, Miss Walker. Has anyone from the coroner's office been on? Len, Len. Mm. Oh. Uh, the coroner said, can you be down at the coroner's office at half past 12 today? Today? Well, it's only so that you can get things over as fast as possible. You'll only be there for five minutes. After you've done that, you can make arrangements for the funeral. Yeah, well, 12 that'll be fine, thanks, Len. I'll Thank run you, you down in the van, if you like. Oh, thanks again. Thank you, Len. Uh, Mrs Walker, do you mind if I do... Uh, do use the telephone. I'd like oh, to ring up Mr. Mrs. Chatlock in Glasgow. Thank you. I suppose he's inviting them all down to the funeral. Oh, I don't think so, love. His father-in-law's been bedridden all winter. His chest, you know. Well, perhaps Mrs. Chatlock could come on her own. I don't think it's as easy as that, Mrs. Caldwell. Did uh, Kenneth say when the funeral would be? No, not as yet, Mrs. Caldwell. It causes such a lot of work, doesn't it? All those people concerned and involved. As if death was more important Pardon, than... Pardon, uh, Nothing, Minnie, nothing. I'm afraid that Mrs. Tatlock can't come to the funeral. It seems there's uh, a problem getting someone to look after Mr. Tatlock at such short notice. Anyway, I'm sending the kids up to Glasgow today, if possible. Mm. We decided it's better if Val's mum should tell them. Mm. Well, I don't think I could mm. and send them away. Have you anyone in mind, Ken, to take the kids up? No, I, I'm not going to take them I'll take them up for you, if you like. Honestly? Yeah, well, it's, it's no trouble. How do we get there? In my van. Oh, all right. But it's, it's such a long way to Glasgow. It just drags on and on. Oh, I, I like driving anyway. It'd be a sight better for Lucille than having to look cases all about the place. Does that sound all right with you, Spider? Yeah. I think oh. we'd better get down to the coroner's office. Your mind isn't on things the day after. All you do is feel sorry for yourself. It's not the day after somebody dies. It's the month after and the months after the that. The thing that bothers me is when you're born, you're told to live to probably 70. OK, fair enough, lucky if you are. If not, well, un unlucky, eh? But why Val? She was only, what, what, 28, wasn't she? Doesn't make sense, does it? Oh, I know these parsons tell you it's the will of God, but to my way, they're just a, a flipping excuse. We don't agree much as a rule, do we, Dad? Hmm? Well, I don't know. You've been traipsing in and out all day. Fella's going into the flat. We've had policemen, firemen, chaps from the town hall I've recognised. I think something's going on. Right, you'll be good, you two, for your Uncle Ray, won't you? Why have you and Mummy taken us to see Grandma? Well, because Grandma wants to see you, and Daddy's got a lot of things to do. What? Oh, a lot of things. For Mummy. Look, I I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Weaver. I've just been with the tenant of this flat, actually. It's not very pleasant seeing to his wife's inquest. That's all right, Councillor Fairclough. I've had plenty of time to look around, and I'd rather do that on my own. Now, what's the object of the exercise, anyway? In my opinion, this fire has revealed some very serious structural faults. Look. And I've been asked to prepare a report. I see. To put them right, like. I'm going to recommend, in the interests of safety, that this whole block of flats should be pulled down. 